So, if you're anything like me, you love a good shortcut. And recently I've been researching some macro keyboards to make my life a little bit easier when I'm researching, filming, shooting, editing, anything like that. But then I had an idea. I thought, why don't I have a go at making something similar myself? So in this video, I'm going to be sharing how I made my very own shortcut console panel thing. Yeah, I need to think of a better name for that, but it makes life a lot easier and I had a great time making it. So let's jump in. So the first thing that I did is log on to ChatGPT and have a good old conversation. I told it what I'm setting out to make, the components I want to use, what features I want the end product to have, and other little bits of information. So ChatGPT gave me the sketch that I needed, and it needed a little bit of tweaking, but on the whole it was a really good sketch which I was able to use and modify as I went along through the project. So guys, the microcontroller that I'm going to be using for this project is an Arduino Micro. Now there's a couple of reasons for that. Firstly, it's really small and in a world where everybody wants to go smaller, any, anything that helps us achieve a smaller form factor is gladly welcome. But there's a second more important reason. This Arduino Micro is recognized by my computer as a USB device. Now that's key to this working because when I connect it up to my computer, I can make the computer think it's anything that I tell it to. That's really, really important and it will come into play later on. So that's our microcontroller. Here is our LCD screen. It's pretty standard. You guys have probably seen these knocking about all over the place. It's 16 by four, so it'll give us a nice amount of screen real estate. I've got this soldered up to a shield. So rather than having to pin up all these individual pins, there's just four for me to go through. So that's ground, power, clock, and data, I believe. So that's our screen. And lastly, here's our rotary encoder. Again, it's fairly standard. We've got our four or five pins, I should say. Clicks and rotates just like that. So that will help us go through the list. And then when we're ready to select an option, we just go ahead and press like that. Once I had all my components ready, what I did next was hook up my Arduino Micro, upload the sketch that ChatGPT gave me a little bit earlier, and then got to soldering some pins onto the Micro. Once that was done, I went ahead and started putting everything on a breadboard just to make sure it worked before we moved on to the modeling and 3D printing aspect of the project. So we've gone ahead and gotten everything set up and here's our LCD screen. Um, at the minute, just while we're in the testing phase, I've only gone ahead and put two really simple applications. We've got a calculator and notepad. Behind my hand there, you can see my two monitors. So we're gonna go ahead and see if this all works. So here we go lovely and one more notepad perfect so that's all working exactly as intended now i'm going to go ahead and add a few more apps and features things that i use on the regular and then we can go ahead and move on from there but all in all good progress so far we've got all the different features that i'm going to scroll through and we're going to try and test them one by one so let's start off nice and easy with system info ka -ching. We'll save the best tool last. Let's go for the browser. So that's open up Google Chrome. Where are we? And then we have screenshot, that's fairly straightforward. Calculator, same as before. Notepad, command prompt, browser we've done. Last but certainly not least, let's try Prusa Slicer. Lovely, and Fusion 360. Perfect, so those are all working exactly as intended. Now we can go to the more interesting part and try and make a nice 3D printed enclosure for all this. So now that we had gotten to the stage that everything was working on a breadboard on a, in what's effectively a prototype stage, the next step was to go ahead and start modeling an enclosure for everything. Now the way I like to model my enclosures for electronics is first by creating replicas or mock-ups if you like of the individual components. Not in massive detail but just enough to get the rough gross features of what you're modeling around and then building something around it in Fusion 360. So this often involves taking a lot of measurements as you see me doing there and then replicating those in Fusion 360. 
So I started off with my micro, then went onto the encoder, and then onto the LCD screen. Once I had all these measurements, I was able to create these in Fusion 360 and go from there. So this is what the process looks like in Fusion 360. So I started off by just modeling all the components, getting them into a rough arrangement that I had in my mind and then building a case around it. And this is what the final rendering looked like in CAD. So that you can see me here just arranging the components in the way I have in mind, bringing them back up one by one. And then you can see here right at the end, the case that I have in mind. Fairly simple, but I think it's fairly effective. Right guys, so let's have a run through of all the components we've got here. These are the electronics we went through before. So you've got your screen, micro and rotary encoder. I'll put those to the side for now. We went through those earlier. Now this, these are all the 3D printed parts. So you've got your front plate, back plate, that'll go on like that. And it's going to be held together by some nuts and bolts. Now this little thing that I've made is basically a little housing for the Arduino micro. I didn't really want to do anything irreversible to it. So I came up with this as an idea. So the micro fits in this little case like so. Like that. There's already some nuts there, so it's going to be held together by some nuts and bolts, and then this will be glued on, like so, onto the back case there. So I'll go like that, and the best part is that it gives me access to the USB-C port there. And then in the future, whenever I decide to dismantle this project, I can just take the top part off and free the micro, so to speak. So that way, I don't do any don't do any permanent damage to it. So that's an idea I came up with. It took me a while to think up of that actually, so if anyone in the comments wants to drop a better suggestion, please feel free because um, it'll help me next time. And then lastly, these are just some feet that will prop the whole thing at a 45 degree angle once we're done. So these will get glued on like so. That, those will just get super glued on, I think that whole floor, and then the whole thing will set up like that. So, that's a run through of the parts. Now it's time for me to do a quick dry fit, make sure everything fits properly. Right guys, so that is the Arduino Micro in the little housing there. Try and get it to zoom in there. There we are. So, there's our USB-C. And the way I've designed this is that once I've soldered everything on, there's going to be space for the wires, the solder and everything without it getting in the way of the fit of the rest of the project. So, that's why I've got these little slits there. But that's fitting perfectly. I'm going to go ahead and check the rest of the print now. Unfortunately, this is something I didn't factor in, but when I try and put the back and the front plates together, you can see there's not enough space. And the reason why is because I didn't actually account for the fact that the nuts were going to be sitting over there, so they're actually getting in the way of and stopping everything from fitting together. So, back to the drawing board somewhat. I'm just going to go ahead and redesign this and reprint it just to allow a bit more space on the inner walls here for some for the nuts. But um, yeah, thank God for 3D printers. So once I remodeled the files, I got the 3D printers to work. All right, everyone. So the printers have finished printing the new, the new updated versions. So let's get those off. There's a front plate. Here is the back plate. So the prints have come out really nicely. Now I'm going to go ahead and get everything reassembled and hopefully with the added space for the nuts everything should fit in together. So let's get this put, put back together. So 
So after the revision of the model, everything was fitting absolutely perfectly. It was a nice snug fit, there were no open gaps, and then we were at the point where we can move on to soldering. Right guys, so we've got everything soldered up now. So we just have a quick run through. So obviously here's our encoder. This is our LCD screen. And this is a little case that I made for the Arduino Micro so that I don't have to super glue it or damage it in any way. So now that this is ready, it's time to go ahead and use our 3D printer parts to get everything assembled. So let's go ahead and get that done. Right guys, and here is everything all assembled. It's looking really, really good. We've got it hooked up there with the USB-C. I went for a slightly different color of the knob there, just so that we can have a little bit of a contrast. And then you can see it just at a bit of an angle. If I turn it on its side there, there we are. I'm really happy with the way this turned out. It's got that nice console look to it. And now the only thing that's left is to make sure it's working as intended. So let's go give it a go. Here's the finished project. There's a screen and you can see all the different options. This is a knob I printed from a file I got from Printables. I'll put a link in the description below. Please go and give the creator some love. It's a really nice knob in case you're looking for something similar. But anyway, here we are. So these are all the different options that we looked at before. And now we're just gonna do a final check to make sure it's all working. So here we are. Lovely, that's our calculator. Screenshot, system info. And command prompt. Perfect. Guys, that's a wrap. I'm really happy with the way this turned out. It's got a really nice, polished, complete look and it works really, really well. The good thing about this is that you can customize it so you can add shortcuts to pretty much anything. If it's, a, if it's a non-native app that you want to add shortcuts to, just like I did with Prusa Slice and Fusion 360, you can use something called Auto Hotkeys to set up a hotkey shortcut and then program that into the sketch. But otherwise, good to go. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, please consider liking, subscribing and leaving some comments down below. I'm going to leave some links to some other similar projects that I've done, so please go check those out as well if this is your sort of thing. But otherwise, I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.